I am so excited you're here because I have several truly high-end Dollar Tree farmhouse DIYs that I know you're gonna love. If that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. I'm telling y'all, you are gonna freak out when you see these projects if you love high-end farmhouse decor. So I'm gonna start off with this black canvas that I got from Dollar Tree. I am absolutely loving these black canvases. I just recently found these at my Dollar Tree and I need to go get more, y'all. I only picked up two and this is my last one. So let me know in the comments, have you guys seen these black canvases at your store? Um, but anyway, to start off, I'm gonna take it out of the plastic and then I'm going to use my large chip brush and my white Waverly chalk paint to dry brush all the way around the edges as well as in the middle of this canvas. Next, I'm going to take this farmhouse transfer that I got off of Amazon. Now, I got these in a huge pack. You guys were actually telling me about these farmhouse transfers. And y'all, I was very impressed with how many you get for the price. So, I will leave the bundle down in the pin comment as well as the description box below. But I just cut away the barn from the other little image. I make sure to fuzz it because I've never used these particular transfers before so I did not want to ruin my canvas but come to find out you really do not need to um, I would actually suggest not to fuzz when you are chalking on canvases just because it's a little bit tricky to get your image to be nice and crisp so I'm going to tell you exactly what I did to get it as crisp as possible so once I fuzzed it, again, I don't suggest that, I made sure to stir up my paste very well. Then when I went to squeegee on my chalk paste, which you can get my, you can get chalk paste in my chalk shop, again, link down below. But I just went very lightly with my squeegee over this transfer. Once I had all of the X. All of the excess, y'all know I can't talk, all of the excess squeegeed off. Then when I pull up my transfer, I pull it up nice and slow. Y'all know I am super impatient, so I hit it with the blow dryer to make sure it was dry. And then I took this windmill transfer. I aligned it right over the right side of my barn. And then wherever the windmill met the barn, I made sure to tape it off. That way I didn't squeegee past where it met the back of the barn. I wanted this to look like it was behind the barn. Um, so that is the purpose. But if you guys want to have more of the windmill than the barn, then you can do your windmill first and then transfer on your barn doing it the exact same way. Now that did bleed a little bit, but it still looks so good. I think that this white paste in the barn and the windmill looks so gorgeous against that black canvas. Let me know, would you guys have done it on a white canvas with a black barn or do you like it just like this? For the bottom, I wanted this to be like a standing little picture. So I went in my stash of scrap wood. I pulled out a piece that would fit perfectly at the bottom and I stained it with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and then of course, I hit it with my blow dryer to dry it quickly. I then take my hot glue, which I love Gorilla Hot Glue. I just feel that it gives the best hold. So I put some Gorilla Hot Glue at the bottom of my canvas and glue that to um, the base. I also reinforce that hot glue on the back to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. And then I go in my stash and get this greenery that I got from Walmart and I just cut two little picks off. I then arranged it on there and then I changed my mind. I just love that natural wood against the black. And then once again, my OCD brain changed my mind again. So I took this ribbon from Dollar Tree. It's very farmhousey to me. And I made a finger bow. And then I glued down the greenery and glued the bow right in the middle of the greenery. I also dovetailed the ends of my ribbon just to give it a little finished touch. Thank you. 
and that was it for this one you guys so quick and easy very budget friendly it looks so high end like you would pick this up from a high end store and I just love the way that this looks let me know down in the comments what you guys think of DIY number one We are literally so close to 100K. If you guys are enjoying this video, please share it out. Don't forget to subscribe, tap the bell and all that way you're notified of every single video and let's jump back in. Moving on to DIY number two, you guys. Everybody makes lanterns, okay? I even made a gorgeous lantern in my last DIY video. So if you guys have not checked that out, I will leave it linked in the comments as well as at the end of this video. So once you're done watching this, then you can find it super easily. But I take these frames from Dollar Tree. Now I started with four, but you want to go ahead and do all six at the same time, just so that way they you save time and they all are nice and evenly painted. So I ripped off the little stand in the back and then I used my screwdriver to pull up those little tabs, remove the backing as well as the picture inside, and then I just push those tabs down once again. Next, I'm gonna take my bamboo sticks that I get off Amazon. Once again, I'll have it linked down below for you guys in my Amazon shop. You'll see all links are now in one place and that's where you can find all of my links. Um, but I just lay these bamboo sticks over on an angle on my frame. I mark it to make an X and then I cut it down with my scissors. If it's still a little, a little bit too big, I just go ahead and cut a little at a time until it fits perfectly. I then repeated that step for the second side. And once I had the full piece cut, then I hold it over once again I mark it in the middle and then cut that down. That way they lay really nicely on the glass. Once I was done doing the first X, then I just held it up to my other bamboo sticks and I just cut four of the full piece and obviously eight of the half pieces. And once again, each frame is just a tiny bit different. Um, so you just want to make sure that you are holding it into your frame. And if it needs to be adjusted, then to just adjust it accordingly. Once I had all of my pieces cut, then I just use my chip brush that I get off Amazon. Now, if you guys have been around for any length of time, then I used to use these little baby chip brushes. I used to love them so much, but everybody sold them out. All the DIYer, DIYers started using them, and then all of um, the subscribers started using them, and now I can't get them anymore. I do have one pack. I'm just like so afraid to use it because I know I can't get them anymore, but I did find a close alternative on Amazon now these shed pretty bad so what I do with these is I just kind of pull out the bristles as much as possible before I start painting that way it gives you less fallout but I do go ahead and I dry brush or no I didn't dry brush <laughs> it's late here and I'm trying to get this out to you on Friday night so just bear with me you guys but um, I used my chip brush and I stained all of the pieces front and back and then once they were completely dry then I used another chip brush and I dry brushed my white Waverly chalk paint on both sides as well. Now 
Next, we're going to move on to the frames once again. And I just start by using my super glue. And I'm going to put a little dab in each corner. And then I'm also going to put little dabs in the glass. Because this glass was not completely filling the inside of the frame, I do just put a little dot to make sure that the glass is not going to go anywhere. And then I go ahead and glue my X pieces down. Next, I'm going to go ahead and remove all of the label holders with my drill, and I set those aside. I then took my chip brush and my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain, and I'm going to heavily dry brush all the way around each frame. Next, I'm going to dry brush my white Waverly chalk paint all the way around all four frames as well. And then I use my hot glue to glue them all together in a box. Now I start with one frame. I put a bead of hot glue down the side, glue the next frame to it. I repeat on the other side, and then I glue the last frame on the inside of the two side frames. I then just finish those unfinished edges with my white Waverly chalk paint and my chip brush. And then I take this square wood piece from Dollar Tree. I sit my little frame over it. I mark it where it needs to be cut. And then I use my DeWalt circular saw to cut that down. Once that was cut and I sanded down the edges, then I used my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain once again. Surprise, surprise. Now, I just want to say that I love Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. I am not sponsored in any way, um, but I love it because it's non-toxic. It doesn't stink. It dries very quickly, and it just gives such a beautiful application. So once that was completely dry, then surprise, surprise, I used my chip brush and I dry brush that white Waverly chalk paint. I then just glue my frame right down on top of my piece of wood. Now this is exactly why I told you to do six frames at once because now we're going to move on to the roof part. So I take the same frames once again. I rip off the little stands and the stickers off the back. I take the pictures out of the inside, but this time I'm going to use the backs. I'm going to paint it with my white Waverly chalk paint, giving it a distressed coat. And then I'm also going to dry brush that with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain once the white Waverly chalk paint was completely dry. Once again, I'm going to dry brush that voodoo stain around the frames and then finish it with my white Waverly chalk paint once it's dry. I did forget to mention that I did take off the labels, the label holders, and I do leave them off for the roof pieces. And then I also glue the roof pieces together. Now, y'all know I love to leave in my mistakes. I am no perfect crafter, and when I make mistakes, I just do my best to fix it, and it is no big deal. So don't be, don't be intimidated, y'all. I know that you can do this project. It's super easy, 
And don't be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes are how we learn. So I just pulled that apart because originally I tried to glue it right on the edge. And I realized that I just needed to glue them together um, on the flat part of the frame to make sure that it glued together really nicely. So once that was glued together, then I took these little tiny wreaths that I got from Hobby Lobby and I take that same Walmart greenery that we used in the beginning of the video and I just glue down my greenery going around and around in one direction. Now this was pretty fluffy and wonky and I just didn't really like that look. It was driving me crazy. So I did cut it down until my eyes were happy. I repeated those same steps with my second little wreath and because I felt that there were a few little bare spots, I did use the scraps to glue down in the bare spots. Once my wreaths were completely finished, then I went ahead and glued those down to my roof. I also used my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint to make sure that the unfinished edges look cohesive with the rest of my lantern. Now the possibilities are endless with what you put in your lantern. You can put a plant, you can put all types of stuff in here, you guys. I chose to go with a candle and because we have greenery at the top, I didn't feel it was necessary to put any greenery at the bottom. But if you like that look, you totally can. And let me know what you guys think of DIY number two down in the comment section below. For DIY number three, I'm going to take this welcome sign from Dollar Tree and once again, this piece of scrap wood. Now this piece of wood came from Dollar Tree at Christmas time when they had those little wooden 3D scenes. Um, and I always save scrap wood like this because you never know what you can use it for. So I flipped it over because it does have lines at the bottom and I stained it with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. While that was drying, I take my welcome sign out of the plastic and then I remove the welcome sign with my screwdriver. It was only glued down in certain spots with some super glue, I believe. Um, so this did come up pretty easily. It was no big deal. And it was that MDF board. Um, so it did chip apart, but no big deal. We weren't using it anyway. I then wiped off the excess stain and I sanded down spots where the welcome sign was glued to the sign. Once the bottom piece was completely dry, then once again, I dry brushed with my white Waverly chalk paint. And then I dug in my stash for a piece of scrapbook paper that kind of went with the theme of this decor. If you guys have been around for any amount of time, then you know I like all of my projects to match. I don't know if it's an OCD thing or an ADHD thing, but when I am doing projects, I don't know why my brain works like that. Is anybody else like that or is it just me? So anyway, once I found the perfect scrapbook paper, I just laid it over my sign and kind of pushed it down to get an indentation of where I need to cut. And then I cut it down to size. I used my disappearing purple glue stick to glue not only the sign itself, but the back of the scrapbook paper. And then I went ahead and put that on my sign, making sure to smooth it down really nicely. Thank you. 
Next, I'm gonna take this farm sweet farm transfer. I thought it was so cute with the little barn and the chicken at the top. And because we are transferring onto paper, I did make sure to fuzz this really, really well. And then I laid it down in my sign and I used my black chalk paste to transfer on that image. I then went ahead and peeled back my transfer. It worked out beautifully. I love the way that this looks. And then I just made a simple jute bow with my finger bow trick. I adjusted my little finger bow because when you're trying to make a little teeny tiny bow, sometimes the jute wants to be a little bit wonky because it was on a roll. So I just go ahead and fool with it for a little bit until I was satisfied. I cut off the edges and then I hot glued that right on the chicken's feet where it met the barn. Last but not least, I once again hot glued my little picture to the bottom piece so that it could have a little stand. And that was it for DIY number three, you guys. Look how gorgeous this turned out. I absolutely love it and it went perfect with my decor. For the next DIY project, I'm going to take this wood hanging decor from Dollar Tree. I'm also going to take the transfer of choice and lay that down on the piece of wood. I mark it and then score it with my utility knife to cut that piece apart. Once I scored it about six or seven times, I then flipped it over, I bent it so that way I could see where I needed to cut the back and then cut the back. I then sanded down the edges smooth, and once that was sanded down, then of course, I stained it with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. Now, I personally like rustic farmhouse decor, but if you're more modern farmhouse decor, you can totally give this a good coat. I left it a distressed coat of the stain because I like that distressed look, but I am only here for inspiration, you guys. If you do not like a color or a step that I use, you can totally change it up to fit your decor or make it to your liking. So once my stain was completely dry, then I used a combination of my big chip brush as well as my smaller chip brush to make streaks with dry brushing over my sign. I then cut away the welcome to the farmhouse transfer. I laid it on my sign making sure to smooth it out really really well and then I stirred up my white paste and I transferred that on. Once I peel back that transfer to reveal that gorgeous image, I am never tired of pulling those transfers back and revealing the image. Now, I'm really impressed with these, you guys. I really do like these from Amazon. They're a great price. So I definitely suggest for you guys to grab them and try them out for yourself. And then let me know what you guys think of them as well. So I set my sign aside and then I used the same greenery. I used almost a whole pick for this one. I used two pieces on each side, making sure to arrange them so that they are nice and full. And I glued them down to the bottom of this wooden bead wreath from Dollar Tree. And then once my greenery was glued down on either side, then I made a simple bow with this 
farmhouse ribbon from Walmart that I got at fall time. You guys, I am literally kicking myself that I didn't grab like 10 rolls or whatever they had because now I'm out. I don't have any more and I'm so sad about it. I'm going to try to search on the internet and see what I can't find. But if I do find it, I will definitely let you guys know. So once I created the bow, I then dovetailed the ends cut off the jute at the back and then glued that down in the middle of the greenery. Last but not least, I laid my welcome to the farmhouse sign on top of my little wreath. I glued that down and that was it for this project. I absolutely love the way that it turned out. I think the sign and the ribbon just go so well together and I can't wait to hear what you guys think as well. For DIY number five, we're going to take a five by seven canvas from Dollar Tree. We're going to take it out of the package and then I'm going to dry brush all the way around this frame as well as on the inside with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain and my large chip brush that I get from Home Depot. And then take this certified farm fresh milk transfer with the little cow on it and I arrange it to my liking. I make sure to press it down really nicely once again and then transfer that on with my black chalk paste. Again, when using chalk paste and transfers on canvas, you want to make sure that you're going nice and light handed because sometimes if you try to use too much pressure, the chalk paste likes to bleed and go through the transfer. So I make sure to be very careful. I then pull that up to reveal once again this gorgeous image and let that dry and then took another piece of scrap wood now this is the end of a stir stick and I stain that piece as well. I then once again hit it with my blow dryer to make sure it is nice and good and dry and then I glue my canvas down to the stand. Y'all, I went back and forth with what I wanted to do with this sign so many different times. I tried so many different things and I just really wasn't liking any of it. But I did find these little corner pieces in my stash. So I thought that they were perfect to just give this sign the finishing touch that it deserved. Once those were glued down, then I dry brushed with my white Waverly chalk paint and I still thought it was missing a little something. Now looking back in the camera view, I do wish that I would have transferred on that Dollar Tree eucalyptus wreath, um, but it's okay. I still love the way that it turned out. Now would you have used the rub on transfer wreath or do you love it just the way it is? Okay, friends, for our last and final DIY, if you guys are still around, please leave me a cow emoji down in the comment section. If you don't know where the cow is or you don't have it, just say cow. That way I know you're still here, you're still watching, and you're still in the game with me. Um, but I do take one of those backs from the frames that we used in the lantern. I give it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. Once that was dry, I dry brushed it with my stain. And then I took this little mini small farm transfer, transfer that on with my black chalk paste, dried it really well with my blow dryer. And then I took my square dowels, measured them out for a frame using my miter shears. And then once I had all of my pieces measured out, so what I did was I laid a piece down on the side and at the top, I marked it where it needed to be cut. And then I just held those two pieces up to my other square dowels and cut those down to size. That way I had four even pieces. Next, I sanded down the edges smooth 
and once again stained it with my stain. Now because this piece is super thin and I wanted to make sure that my frame had a nice hold, I did cut down a itty bitty square dowel into four little pieces, glued those on either side of my frame in the back to make sure I had something to glue to, and then I went ahead and glued down my frame. Once my frame was completely glued down, then I went ahead and glued some greenery at the bottom. I had already had a little bow made from a previous project that I didn't use. It's this little farmhouse ribbon from Dollar Tree. Glued that down to the middle and before I glued down the greenery and the bow, I did dry brush all the way around my frame to make it look all cohesive. Last but not least, I dovetail the ends of the ribbon and look how cute this turned out, you guys. This would be perfect for a tiered tray or a small little shelf. The possibilities are endless. So let me know down in the comments which was your favorite project of this video. Don't forget to share this out and subscribe if you haven't already if you enjoy my content. You guys, we are so close to 100K. We're just about two thousand subscribers away and you guys i'm literally blown away i want you to know how much i appreciate each and every one of you nothing i do would be possible without you i will never ever ever forget where i came from and i want you to know if nobody has told you today you are absolutely stunning you are worthy you are gorgeous you literally can do anything you set your beautiful mind to Coming from an addict who is almost nine years sober, you guys. If I can do it, I know that you can do it as well. I just recently lost 80 pounds and I would love to help you guys do the same. I also get paid a hefty price to share how amazing this product is. So if you guys want to learn how to drink an amazing product that not only helps you to lose fat, but gives you the best energy, focus, and mood of your life, and then you get paid to share it, text me the word biz at the end of this video let's chat let's get you started i'm building the dream team and i would love to have you a part of it so that we can go out and change the world with that being said i love you guys so much i'll catch you in the next one bye Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.